Hey guys, welcome to Data Tech, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will be looking at Meta's Llama 3 flagship models, which perform significantly good in language understanding and vision tasks. What we will do in this video, it will be an experimental video where we will take the smaller Llama 3 series models, the 8 billion, 3 billion, and 1 billion parameter model, and evaluate them on different tasks. So, let's get started. The Llama 3 series by Meta, particularly the Llama 3.1 and 3.2, there were two subsequent releases. These models have showcased significant advancement in large language models, emphasizing both capability and accessibility. They are fully open source models and they can be set up and operated privately for business use. You don't need to call any API because the model is completely open source. You can comp host it yourself. Uh, the first release, the Llama 3.1 release, uh, the, the biggest model was a 4.5 billion parameter models. But there were also other 70 billion, 8 billion parameter model which were released along with the big 405 billion parameter model. And uh, the 405 billion parameter model was one of the largest openly available model in the market at that time. Also smaller models of as I said 70 billion and 8 billion parameters were released. How the training was performed? Training was done over, on over 15 trillion tokens. And uh, it leveraged high optimized training stake where it used 16,000 H100 GPUs. And uh, this is the model which was uh, which gave competition to its rival GPT-4 in various tasks including general knowledge, reasoning and multilingual and translation. How was the model trained? The model was trained in the conventional uh, LMV which is first it was pre-trained on next word prediction and once the pre-training was done, the post-training enhancements were it was fine-tuned using techniques like supervised fine-tuning and direct preference optimization to enhance its responsiveness towards user instruction while ensuring safety. So basically with the pre-training it will learn all the knowledge in the world because it will know what word comes next given the previous few words next we want a model which is conversational in nature so that's why the supervised fine tuning was done that given this question what should be the preferred answer it should predict and also direct preference optimization was done if you re recall chat gpt was trained using ppo uh, which is proximal policy optimization it's a reinforcement technique but here the training happened using direct preference optimization which is a clever technique what it does is given a question if there are two answers the more preferred answer is uh, assumed to be the positive class and the less preferred answer is assumed to be negative class and the model parameters are tuned in such a way that it gives more weightage or it gets more aligned towards more preferred answer. So this is the clever technique of direct preference optimization which was used along with supervised fine tuning in the post training uh, enhancement step. Post Llama 3.1, Llama 3.2 series was released. This version introduced even smaller models of 1 billion and 3 billion parameters and they were designed, the smaller models were designed for edge and mobile devices. So basically they can even fit in a mobile device. And along with it, also the larger models, 11 billion and 90 billion parameter models, which supports multi-model capability. That is, they can not only answer text, they are good at text, but they can also answer vision queries. They are good both at text and images. So multi-model capabilities model was 3. Point, Lama 3.2. Uh, the 11 billion and 90 billion models excel in image reasoning task. Um, they can analyze image and respond to queries based on visual data. So we have already seen the Llama 3.1 series was trained on uh, pre next word prediction and the post training happened on supervised fine tuning and direct preference optimization to fine tune the results. Here, since we also have vision capability, how the model is trained, uh, the training process is similar to 3.1, but to bring that vision understanding capabilities, uh, the training process integrated image adapters into pre-trained text models, enabling them to process both text and images effectively. What do I mean by image adapters? So basically image models were also uh, integrated with the text models and what type of task it was trained on. So it can understand the vision uh, as well. The model was trained on image understanding tasks such as image recognition, identifying and classifying objects in the image, image reasoning, answering questions that require understanding relationship between different objects in an image. Image captioning that given a image can we generate a descriptive caption that can summarize the visual content of the image. So the, um, the model which was an integration of text model and vision model was trained on these tasks which is visual recognition, identifying objects, image reasoning able to reason what's there in the image, why and so on and image captioning able to summarize the image content. So once the model was uh, trained on this task, it became very good in multi-model capabilities that is understanding both text and image. Now, what we'll do in this video is we will take the smaller models, the 1 billion, 3 billion, 8, and 8 billion parameter models, which were optimized for edge computing. That is, they can even fit in the mobile device of the users, uh, which doesn't even need any cloud dependency as well, because the models are so small, it can fit locally in the system and maintaining user privacy. Smaller models, how they are trained, they take the bigger models and train them through knowledge distillation from larger models. That is, knowledge distillation is a technique where 
uh, which utilizes teacher student uh, type of learning mechanism where the student is trained to predict as close to what teacher is predicting i have a video on knowledge distillation technique i will add the link of it also in the description section please check it out so the smaller models are trained through knowledge distillation of large models even smaller models such as 8 billion and 3 billion parameter models perform well in language understanding tasks and they can be run locally without any internet or cloud support you can just download it in your system in this video what we will do we will use olama which is a utility tool which by which you can download the llama series models or any open source models and run it on your system we will use this olama utility to run these models locally locally and evaluate them on various engineering related tasks so the main intention of this video is it's an experimental video where we will see how good these smaller models are are they really good enough that we can put them in our mobile apps devices and uh, make use of them so uh, what i will do i will assess the models capability in four different tasks which is code writing code debugging social media content creation tasks and also research assistance task how good is it how good are these smaller models in research assistant kind of task so let's get started these are the uh, codes which i will take you through it and also i will add the link of these uh, notebooks in the description section so you can download it from there as well so let's get started and look at the codes uh, i have a similar code for llama uh, 3 billion parameter as well uh, this is the llama 3 billion parameter model and this is the 8 billion let's look at the 8 billion results and then we can uh, quickly look at the 3 billion results so first what i will do is i will um, do the olama setup it's a utility with which you can run this open source models locally in your system i have used kaggle notebook here which is same as uh, running in your local system so um, i have downloaded the olama and then i am downloading the llama 3.18 billion parameter model which is an instruct model that is fine tuned on question answering and um, direct preference optimization techniques so that it's more conversational in way which uh, given a question it can reply with you with an answer so first uh, one, it will get downloaded and once downloaded let's look at how good it is at the first task which is code writing so let's evaluate how good these models are on different tasks starting with the first task which is code writing so what i uh, gave to it was that there is already a data set with features like experience employment grade city and qualification of the person and it has to predict the salary and the values that all the features experience employment grade city tier and qualification can take three values one two three three being highest one being lowest and it has to predict the salary which is the target variable and we want to train a neural network to predict the salary so it was able to write a very good code it also did feature engineering like transforming the uh, data types and so on and finally it put a regression it fit it tried to fit a regression model uh, with mean squared error as the loss function you can see here right and i was uh, happy with the result so this was a easy code writing that i gave it now let's give it a tougher code writing next what i did was i took the same problem statement but instead of fitting a regression i told it do a distribution fitting assume that salaries follows a log normal distribution right so um, here you can see the task is to train a neural network to fit a log normal distribution using tensorflow keras to maximize the log likelihood or maximize the probability density function of the uh, distribution the model should learn the parameters of the distribution so basically instead of fitting a regression we are saying that uh, assume there is a log normal distribution that salary follows try to predict the parameters of it now in this case the loss can't be mean square error the loss has to be maximizing the log likelihood which can be same as minimizing the negative log likelihood so let's see whether it was able to do that or not so uh, two things should happen one is it is this should declare the loss as negative log likelihood and it should have two output predictions two neurons as the output which is mu and sigma of the distribution so let's see whether it was able to do that or not you can see that it is it is fitting the log normal distribution this is the log normal distribution which is which will act as a uh, loss function let's see the loss function yeah loss function is negative log likelihood and also it is predicting uh, two output uh, neurons which is mu and sigma and also you can see here that the loss is log likelihood right and log likelihood is the negative of log likelihood so it was able to solve this uh, problem as well so tougher version of the code writing also it was able to do next i tested it on code debugging first i gave it a easy problem i gave it a binary search but in binary search i made a mistake that uh, let's say the element is that we want to search and the middle element is less than it if the middle element is less than the element we want to search it should it should search on the other greater half right but what i did was instead of that i did low equal to mid minus one actually it should be low mid plus one right because if the uh, middle element is lesser it should it should search on the next bigger half and uh, i i gave it a wrong code and it was able to correct it see um, low is equal to mid plus one it is saying that it changed to mid plus one here also it is explaining what changes it did uh, i also gave it a harder version that uh, given an element search number of times it has appeared for that it will have to do binary search of the first occurrence binary search of the last occurrence and then give the answer the error i did in the code was i twisted the methods 
uh, the the method which finds the first occurrence i made it the last occurrence and function which finds the last occurrence i made it the first occurrence i swapped the two functions as well as one more mistake i made here that final answer will be last minus plus first plus one right because if an element uh, occurs three times then index will be one two three right one two three so three minus one will be two but element has appeared three times so answer should be three minus two plus one last minus first plus one right but i made this mistake last minus first and let's see what corrections it did it was able to uh, correct the two functions the the swaps as well as that last minus first plus one also it was able to correct so it is telling that what revisions it did so even in uh, code debugging both the easier and harder version it was able to write things pretty well next thing what i did was i tested it on con uh, content creation that is social media post generation so i gave it this content that i have created a video on distribution fitting and so on uh, why don't you uh, create a detailed description for youtube post and also correct any technical flow grammar spellings and so on and i have done some grammatical mistakes spelling mistakes as well here it was able to nicely understand the youtube uh, version of it and and define a very good youtube post so if you see it started with a title because youtube videos needs a title title and then the description description is very detailed and it is also telling that what are the problems see you can see that spellings estimation it corrected to estimation Ch chances it is, is corrected to chances so it corrected the spelling grammatical and also since it understands how youtube post is it is able to give me title and description similarly i asked it for linkedin it created a detailed linkedin post and most interesting was the twitter post i asked it that can you also uh, write a twitter post for it twitter post generally have a character limit so it was able to generate a small summary of it and it told me that these are the spelling mistakes and it tried to fit in twitter's 280 character limit so this was the uh, twitter post new video fitting distribution normal log normal we will to data using maximum likelihood estimation unlike simple regression with msc loss this method provides distribution parameters enabling probability calculation via cdf and also it gives some hashtags machine learning statistics and so on i also tested this smaller 8 billion 3 billion parameter models on research tasks how good they can be as a research assistant so i asked it what is bit shading what are some methodologies or ideas to implement it. Bid shading is a technology from ad tech world, advertisement world, where uh, once we have the bid value, what we want to bid, the CPC or CPMs, we reduce the bid, we shade the bid because maybe that bid is also high enough. Competitor may not bid that high enough as well. So we bid shading is a smart strategy to further shade the bid uh, to maximize the win rate as well as uh, pay less premium right so it was able to understand it it knows the since these models are trained on whole internet and even once compressed distilled into 8 billion parameter model the understanding of the world remains it is able to tell me what bit shading is bit shading is a technique used in online advertisement use real-time bidding and programmatic advertisement it involves adjusting the bid price uh, based on various factors and i asked it what are some methodologies or ideas i can implement it said you can do location based bit shading you can do device based bit shading you can do time of the bit shading you can do contextual bit shading you can do machine learning based bit shading uh, and so on and it, it also tried to give me code for each one of them similarly i asked it another tough question what is position bias in recommendation system what are some methodologies or ideas to implement it so it was able to tell me that what position bias is that is uh, it refers to the phenomena where users tend to click on items that appear at the top of the list of recommendation system more frequently than those that appear lower down this can lead to artificially inflated popularity of highly ranked items so items which are appearing on top they get more clicks so they may become more popular not because they are good but just because they are getting good positions and how to correct it randomized ranking which is perfect exactly this is a technique used in uh, position bias correctness randomized ranking kick through rate normalization inverse propensity scoring which is a technique where uh, you give more weightage to clicks which appear which appears on lower ranking so that if an item gets click in lower rank also then that is a higher weighted click than item getting click on uh, high positions right so it was able to tell me inverse propensity scoring as well position aware models diversity based ranking and so on so i was just uh, blown away with these results and also it gave me some ideas to implement it so i was just blown away that just 8 billion parameter models even so much distilled it is able to uh, retain the knowledge it is writing first class code it is able to debug tougher codes it is able to uh, generate very good uh, social media content it is able to uh, work as a research assistant and so on so out of five i will give it five points and also i tested the even smaller parameter model the three billion parameter model uh, i will give it 3.5 out of five the reason being code writing code debugging social media posts it was very good but on the research task i which i uh, gave two points in total so the four task i gave one for code writing one for code debugging one for social media post and two points i had uh, given for uh, this research assistant because these are the most of tasks it didn't perform very well maybe because in three billion parameters it gets too much distilled but it is still perform okay so i will give it 0.5 out of 2 so my rating for 3 billion parameter model is uh, 3.5 
out of 5 and my rating for 8 billion parameter model is 5 out of 5. I was blown away by the results. So you can also test it out for your use case and let me know how you found these models. So with that we come to the end of this video where we evaluated uh, the smaller parameter Llama 3 series models. I was really blown away by the results of 8 billion parameter model. It was too good. It was able to write complex code, debug code, social media posts as well as or help as a research assistant. You can also try out these models on your task and let me know how they performed. And please like the video and stay tuned for more such updates. Bye.